just how and why that man was murdered. In fact, just as you and I. It's marvelous. One man, Johnny Van. With the assassination of JFK in Dallas in November of 1963 and the fall of Cuba to communism, America entered a new chapter in its history. It was also a time when the American mob entered a new chapter. It was a mob no longer defined by the once unyielding code of Omerta, the Sicilian code of silence. A mob no longer led by the colorful characters that saw its rise from the Roaring Twenties through the Depression to the Cold War. The American mob began at the turn of the 20th century as immigrants from Europe began pouring into urban centers along the East Coast, particularly New York City. Poor and isolated, these immigrant Jews, Irish, and Italians banded together to develop their own version of the American dream a unique form of business, organized crime. In New York, Lepke, gangster boss of Murder Incorporated, leaves federal jail for Sing Sing's death house. Through newspapers and film, the leaders of organized crime became household names. Chicago's most notorious citizen, Al Capone, often lionized in the mold of true American heroes, the rugged frontier individualist of the past. These names included Al Capone, Lucky Luciano, and Meyer Lansky. This series, Hollywood vs. the Mob, Fact vs. Fiction, will reveal the truth behind the myth of the American mob and its godfathers. Ten of these. Gee, you taking all these papers, Mr. Rico? I right, sure, ain't I got my picture in them? Little Caesar was the first big mafia movie to come out in the 30s. And along with Scarface and the public enemy, it invented the mobster genre. It was very different than the gangster films that preceded it. Gangster films which focused on the victims of crime and the police who brought the gangster to justice. Little Caesar focuses on the dreams, struggles, and personality of the mobster himself, a character striving for the American dream by illegal means and, in the end, failing. It is Little Caesar that first gives us the mobster as the anti-hero. Somebody finally put one in you. Yeah, but well, they just grazed me, though. The Hollywood producers do just enough to make the audience believe that Little Caesar was based on Al Capone, the best-known mobster of the day. A mobster whose dominance of the Chicago underworld ended the year the movie was released. Did you ever stop to think how you'd look with a lily in your hand? No.